guys, welcome back to another video. This is Motivation for Young Christians. Welcome back, welcome back. In today's video, we'll be diving into John chapter 12, verses 23 to 36. To begin, we're going to start off with a prayer by me, and then we'll get straight into the scripture. If you guys can, by hand and close the eyes. Father God, we thank you for this day that you have made. I rejoice and began in God. I pray that you continue to be with us each and every day, God. I pray that now as we're about to dive into this time of your word, God. I pray that you answer best and come to work, God. I pray that you'll be able to speak to us throughout this video, God. In Jesus' name, best name, God. Amen. Verses 23 says, Jesus replied, Now the time has come for the Son of Man to enter into his glory. 24. I tell you, the truth, unless a kernel of wheat is planted in the soil and dies and remains alone, but is dead which produce many new kernels, a plentiful harvest, harvest of new lives. Those who love their life in this world will lose it. Those who care nothing for their life in this world will keep it for eternal eternity. Anyone who wants to serve me must follow me because my servant must be where I am and the Father will honor anyone who serves me. I'll read the question. It's in the Bible, right? It says, he that loves his life shall lose it. And he that hate his life in this world shall keep it until life eternal. If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. So life and, and life of Christ or with Christ is two different, is two different lives right there. Um, anyone who love life will continue to live it and continue to be with it but because they didn't attach their life to uh, life with Christ when they die they won't make it to heaven but anyone who attached their life with Christ when they die they shall make it to heaven I hope that made sense for you are oh, you in the ballpark not bad not bad at all I want to look for a scripture, but um, it speaks. You're in the um, like Gio said in the war part. It speaks to our commitment to Christ, right? Um, that we're so committed to Him that um, losing our life doesn't phase us. And I, I believe He means it both in the in re regards to our uh, life as it is, as in we're willing to die to the flesh, but also physically, like we're willing to lose our life, life based on our commitment to him right i think we spoke about stefan this week geo and his commitment like I, his radical commitment um paul was committed beyond that to that degree as well we see so many other disciples uh committed to look at john right they were so committed to god um that they um ascribe to this this scripture as well or the statement made in that verse Um, yeah. Oh, the scripture, um, John eleven twenty five. 25, uh, when Jesus was talking to a woman, he said, I am the resurrection of the life and the one who believes in me will live even though, um, they die and whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Yeah, it's definitely like a, almost like a double entendre, like a, a dual meaning. Um, he's asking you to die to yourself, like have yourself die. You living out of your own might, your own will, and surrendering all of that to the will of God and believing in Christ is when you die that way, your own self desires, that is when you learn to live and live through Christ. And then when it all, when it's all said and done, you would ultimately live eternally with Christ when it's time to go home. Um, this just makes me think of a song that Kirk Franklin has um, on that, that new album he dropped not too long ago. Uh, at the end of the song, I think he says, loving you is killing me. And I was like, what? What's that? 
are you talking about? And then it, it, just, it hit. It was just like, oh, I get it. The more I love Christ, the it's killing me. I'm dying to myself so that I can live for Christ. Yeah. So myself wants to fornicate. Myself wants to masturbate. Myself wants to use profane language. But I have to die to myself and tell myself I'm now living for Christ. Absolutely. So, and a couple aspects of what, what do we die to? One, our self centeredness, okay? um, our self sufficiency, and our selfishness. Um, so, we, we're dying to those things on a daily basis. And mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a daily thing. It's not just a one time I'm saved and I'm. Nah, this is a, a daily thing. Got that, Mr. Holder? Yeah, I got that. I know what cool. you're talking about. I don't remember the name of it, but I know what song you're talking about. Because I've listened to that whole how at least like four times. Yeah, no, nah, I love that album. That's a good album. I can't remember the name. I think it's, yeah, I can't remember the name of the song, but <laughs> I think it's Love Theory, I think the name of the album is. I can't remember. Yeah, something like that. 27. Now my soul is deeply troubled. Should I pray, Father, save me from this hour? But this is the very reason I come. I came. Father, bring glory to your name. Then a voice, then a voice in heaven saying, I have already brought glory to your name. I will do so again. When the crowd heard the voice, some thought it was thunder while others declare an angel has spoken to them. Then Jesus told them, the voice was for a year, benefit not mine. The time for judging this world has come when Satan, the ruler of this world, will be cast out. And when I am filled up from, when I'm lifted up from the earth, I will draw everybody to myself. 33. He said this to indicate how he's going to die. That's interesting. Gee, I, I never knew, realized that before Gethsemane, he asked um, that what was coming be taken away from him as well. I never knew he asked before that. I thought it was only while he was there. <clears throat> yeah. Not even the, yeah, before he got to the cross, while he was in the garden praying. But here we see again, he knows what's about to happen, right? He knows his crucifixion um, is ahead. And here we see uh, the humanity of Jesus, right? That he's dreading it in a, in a, in a sense, right? He know he's gonna do it, he know he has to do it, but uh, the fact that he's gonna be separated from the Father, I believe that he feels that the weight of what he's gonna have to bear, I believe he feels that in this moment. So this is why he's saying, um, Father, save me from this hour. But j just like the prayer, he, when he said, he, even after, um, when he was in the garden, he said, uh, he said, Father, would you take this cup from me? Um, but not my will, thy will be done. He says something similar here after he says, Same Father, thing. save me from this hour. Yeah. Um, but this, right? is the reason I came. And I, I love looking intently at the language sometimes because we know when, whenever we see the word but, um, and it, it negates everything that came um, prior, right? Um, mm -hmm. So he said, but this is the very reason I came, right? So Father, whatever it is, what's going to happen, um, ultimately, I want your name to get the glory. Um, Ezra, when we first started this study, uh, the objective was for you to learn more about the man you say you believe in. So just based over these short few chapters, what are you learning about Jesus? I'm learning how how strategic he is and how how everything was planned out. Like right, like everything happened for a reason. And it gave me new meaning to a lot of the things that Jesus said. Cause some of these things I heard, but you never got like a, a a a little background information about it, like where did it come from, like exactly what he meant, and yeah, I don't think I'm missing anything, but that's why I got right. Now. 
Yeah, it's, it's whatever you get from the scripture. It's not like a, a right or wrong. Like, I want you to learn about your Savior. All right? So, like, Jay, Jay just picked up. He saw the humanity in his, sa- his Savior. Like, like the Savior is not just a God, but he also came in, in the, the, the form of a human being. And now he's displaying those emotions. He's really showing that, oh, listen, you know, yeah, I want to pray for the Father to take this cup away from me. Yeah, I want him to pray. Yeah, I want to pray for this hour to pass me by, but but this is the very reason that I've, that I've come. Like, and, I, and I, I'm pretty sure, like, the human form of Jesus is saying to himself, like, I like these people. You know, I've been with them for X amount of time, and I've developed a relationship with them. Um, I like being with them. I like helping them. The human, the humanity part side of him, right? It's just, you know how you, you build a bond with somebody, and then just like that, it's time to go, and you're like, wow. And I, and I think that's just something that, it's just the way we're wired, right? We're wired as a people of relationship. Like, yeah, yeah. It's just in our DNA to want to have companionship, even like even people when they live by themselves they go and get like a cat or a dog or something they just to have the presence of something else that's living next to you it's just it's just how we're wired so i I can only imagine how jesus felt uh jesus the man that how he felt um when this when this time came um and and i'm just imagining what it would have been like to be there to hear a loud voice come from heaven yeah and then this look i was like what and jesus is like that voice is for you not for me so i wonder if those who don't necessarily believe if they heard that voice if that voice was loud enough to be heard you know in all of brooklyn for lack of better terms or was it just you know in 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 crown heights or in a certain area of brooklyn like mm-hmm. That's that's just something I was thinking, like a little bit outside of the box. Yeah. Um, As I think one of the most beautiful things when you read the, the Bible is revelation, right? That God just starts speaking to you. Holy Spirit just starts speaking to you. Uh, for me, um, something to add in reading this again, and the Holy Spirit revealed this to me just now, our obedience glorifies God in our difficulties, right? So even in our difficulties, um, once we're obedient, we're glorifying God. And that's what we're called to do, right? Um, It's not just in the good times and when we go to church on Sunday that we're supposed to bring him glory, right? But in school, at work, at home, I mean, good times and bad times, but we gotta be obedient, right? And in obedience, uh, we glorify him, even in those, conflicting times, a time like now with what's going on in the world. We're called to glorify his name. This You could kind of connect what um, Rajavi said to the story last night with Esther. And what's his name? Malcolm? Midian? Was it Malcolm? Uh, Mordecai. 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 Okay. Yeah. yeah. You could con- connect it with that. I know it was an M. I just don't remember what the M was. So I was just guessing a bunch of M names until I figured it out. So good. Ma- Ma- Malcolm is close enough. <laughs> <laughs> but what, what kind of connection are you making? Uh, to the fact that even through tough times, you still gotta give God glory. It don't matter what's going on. Give God glory, bro. The that's plan. that's what makes that's what makes a good minister of the word. Exactly what you just did, being able to connect Esther to Jesus talking about the hour. Like, I heard I heard I heard a pastor the other day talk about how uh, a man who builds his house on a solid rock will be able to withstand the flood. Um, the wind, and uh, it was something else. But there was like, yo, but did we ever even talk about those floods and the wind? And then went and connected scriptures that talked about the wind and the flood. Like the enemy comes in like a flood. It was just like, 
Right. right? And so what you did is good. And that's exactly the purpose that we're here, right? For you to learn about Jesus, of course, and, and for you to be able to make the connection as you see. Like people say this Bible is just doesn't make sense, but the whole thing is just one big love story and it, it, it connects. They all connect. All the yeah. stories. Absolutely. Absolutely. And if you have the right people around you, you can understand it easily. You gotta surround yourself with the right people. Sure. Or if you have no one around you. If you have no one around you, Spirit. pray pray to God. He'll sort him. He'll get somebody around you. And if no one's around you, pray. I, I mean, you know, you 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 need someone around. I'm just saying, it, there may be sometimes you you can't yeah. reach us, right? Um, ask the Holy Spirit for revelation, ask for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, right? That's, that's, I, I made sure I do that. Um, 34, the crowd responded, we understood from the scripture that the Messiah would live forever. How can he say the son of man will die? Just who is the Just who is this son of man anyway? Jesus replied, my light will shine for you just a little longer. Walk in the light while you can, so the darkness will not overtake you. Those who walk in the darkness cannot see where they're going. Put your trust in the light while there is still time. Then you will become children of light. After seeing these things, Jesus went away and was hidden from them. I want. I, I forgot to mention... Um... 31, just kind of like, verse 31, I meant to go back. It's just something I always thought about. Um, the prince of this world. I, I just always wondered, like, when Lucifer was cast down, you know, it was just, like, did he have to land on Earth? <laughs> You know, did he, like, was it meant for him to come here and just wreak havoc and for Adam and, and Eve to get tripped up? And it's like, like, would there even be a Bible? Like, what, what was the whole purpose of it, you know? And, and yeah, we can say, oh, if God would have just never even did that. And, but everything happened for a reason, you know, just maybe one day the Holy Spirit will reveal that to us. You know, maybe we'll learn why everything had to happen the way it did um, or not, you know, either way, he's still God. Um, right. But understand they're calling him the Prince, right? Even, even with him, even with Jesus declaring that he has power saying, calling him the Prince, right? Because even when you have that title, it comes with a certain level of authority um, and which people don't realize like, the devil kind of like can make things happen, <laughs> you know, under, under the, the Godhead, right? Like notice that he's a prince, not the king of this world. So ultimately he still has to answer to God, just like how we do. Um, but I, I'm just like, I guess the point I'm trying to make is a, like, why did he have to come here and just, you know, why did it have to happen this way? And then B, Although he is here, he's only the prince. He's not the king. You know, there's still someone higher than him. And as long as we are in that, in relationship with the person that's higher than him, um, we should be fine. We should be able to withstand all that he tries to throw up against us. Um, and then I, I forgot to talk about also the next verse. It says, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. Um, I'm I just think about that all the time, like, especially when we're in, like, our praise and worship sessions at church, and it's just, like, seeing everybody on one accord, and we're all just worshiping God in spirit and in truth. I hate different. Like, worship flowing from our hearts and out of our mouths. We're just, like, God, yeah, yeah, like, like every like, soul in the sanctuary just giving it up for God like that that's just a different environment you know it's just lifting God up and exalting him together on one accord 
different. I don't really know how to explain that because sometimes I don't even be in it. But then when I see everybody in it, I start getting it. <laughs> That's how it is. Man. I'm over here. I remember at a retreat. I don't know what happened, but the Holy Ghost was in me. I just started praying for a bunch of people. After I was I was like, what just happened? Just pray for it, man. Just pray for it. I was so confused on what just happened. Cause for, man. I ain't never done. I ain't. I've never done that before. When I pray for people, but like, I remember I went to jail. Then I went to um, Jazz, and I went to this place, and I went to that place. And I think I went to Jive. I'm not even sure, but I went to I think at least four to five people. I ain't never done that before. I'm like, yeah, that gotta be God, cause I definitely was not me. That night was powerful. That night was powerful. Well, we didn't know what to do, bro. We, we was like, yo, let's get baptized tonight. Like, <laughs> we didn't know what to do. Like, we was scrambling. Right. <laughs> we could have put a mini swimming pool in the front. That was it, bro. And I don't even want to talk about it, man. Because the next day just got me, like, tight. <laughs> uh, the time is now, right? We should have, whatever. Let God have his way. Um. All right. So yeah, we uh, where we start that thirty six. I, I I like this, like the whole walking in the dark analogy. For me, I think everybody has had an opportunity to walk in somebody's house or somebody's building or some some type of room where you like walking in the dark and you like see, or your eyes like you try to open up your eyes wider if that's gonna like help you see. And you don't want to turn the lights on and just like that's what we look like in real life and don't even realize it like we're walking in the dark and we're like we're trying to like make our way through this life without god turn the light on just flip the switch that's it aka just accept christ in your life the light the light comes on you just you just see life differently completely different Walk in the light. Yeah, I like how you said we, we walk in light, the darkness, and we don't even know it, right? And that just speaks to the dysfunction of, of this world, right? That dysfunction looks good. It, it can look good, right? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. that's the reality of the time that we're living in. Um, it, it, it's okay to the masses or some people in the world out there whatever they're doing, they're, they're fine with that because that looks good to them. It feels good to them. But as you said, they're, they're walking, in, walking in darkness and they really cannot see and they're really not living. They think they are, right? Because they're having fun and doing all the God knows what, but they haven't even started living yet. I was going to say, I was wondering, did they understand that analogy? I'm really trying to figure out if they understand it. I, not, I know not all of them was going to understand it, but I want to see like exactly for like at least. So, so, I, so they, I mean, through, as you know, like like Jesus was giving them hints and kind of like alluding to what was happening, but I don't think it really hit until it was like fulfilled. Yeah, like because he he he, what Jesus is talking, he's fulfilling. Um, I know we didn't study Exodus. But, yeah, we didn't study Exodus yet, but when um, when the tabernacle was built, you had the the brazen labor, you had the you had the, the altar, you had the labor where it was and they washed their hands, you had the sacrifice, you had to take the blood. It, it was just like a whole ritual, and pretty much all those things were alluding to what Jesus was coming to do, um, and he's just fulfilling all the prophecy. It's like what he's saying right now in a nutshell is like, yo, listen. I'm leaving, continuing the way, um, continue living this life in the light, continue seeking me, stay in me, abide in me. Um, I'm getting ready to bear all sins for man. I'm getting ready to be lifted up on this cross. I'm getting ready to be lifted up into heaven after I'm resurrected. Like, I'm getting ready to provide an opportunity for all the world to be saved through me, through my one act, the ultimate sacrifice. I don't think that they were comprehending that. 
the way Jesus intended for them to do so. Um, if we go back to Isaiah 56, um, this this part here where we started at verse um, 30, what? 37. It begins the fulfillment of Isaiah's prophecy as well. Um, some stuff is coming from Exodus, but if we look at Isaiah 56, there begins the prophecy from uh, from Isaiah. So now we're seeing everything kind of come to fruition based on what Isaiah prophesied in the Old Testament. Okay. I want to read Isaiah like all of it. Man. It's a lot of stuff in there. Yeah, it's a tough read. It's a, it's, it's, yeah, it's a lot. So you really got to like take notes or something but to read it and digest it. Mm -hmm. It's a lot. Yeah. The same with Ezekiel. Mm -hmm. There's so many different prophecies in Ezekiel, right? The judgment. Um, but then it, it switches over to hope and restoration around the 35th chapter, something like that. Um, but that that's another chapter book as well. That's just deep. <clears throat> now it's time for the closing prayer. If you can, buy in and close your eyes. Father God, I thank you and I praise you, God. I pray that today if we came together, brothers, to be able to sharpen each other, God. Iron sharpen iron, to be able to educate each other more in your word, God. To be able to help each other understand your word, God. I pray that you just continue to be with us each and every day, God. I pray that we're able to do this each and every week, God. To be able to educate each other more, learn more about your word, and get closer to you, God. In Jesus' name, your holy name, amen. This is it for the video, guys. Thank you guys for coming back each and every single week. I love you guys. If you haven't liked the video, like like it. If you're new, subscribe, turn on your post notifications. That way, anytime I upload a video, you get a notification. This is motivation for young Christians. I'm out, guys. Bye. <laughs>